Is it on? Oh, it's loading. Watch it open. Um, it's, it's just a big file. Can they hear you now? Nobody is showing up yet. Right? Hey, Benign, can you hear me now? Thanks for that. Um, oh, you can? All right, thanks a lot. Well, thanks for that heads up. I, nobody had told me. Anyway, um, I'd like to welcome each one of you again to our Sabbath school lesson for this morning. Sorry for that glitch. Um, and our lesson today is um, Living by the Word of God. And I think I mentioned earlier that this is um, the last lesson in our quarter, for our second quarter for this year. And today is the 13th, 13th Sabbath. So when you do your offerings today, make sure to remember uh, to give your Sabbath, 13th Sabbath school offerings for missions abroad. Um, I'm not going to pray again. I know we have already lost a few minutes. Um, on our, our lesson today living by the word of God um, you know I was listening to um, one study and they were saying that um, when we sit down and listen to the word of God we retain 5% when we read the word of God we retain 10% when we listen you know audio or visual we retain 20 percent of what we read when we have a discussion about the bible we retain 30 percent when we have a bible discussion with others about the bible we are most likely to retain 50% of the content. But when we actually practice what we read from the Bible, we retain about 75%. You see, can you see the progression right there? And when we teach the Word of God, when we teach each other the Word of God, we retain 90% of the content and this is what the, the great commission is all about the great commission is for us to do what to go go ye therefore and what baptize but also to teach so teaching helps us retain the word of god in our minds in our memories um james uh 1 verse 22 i'm going to read uh that verse uh, James chapter 1 verse 22 it's loading. it says here but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves uh, one of one of the things that people discuss many times is are we supposed to to do anything or just believe in the word of God does the Bible tell us that if we just believe only I know one verse says the devils also believe and they tremble in other words they fear about the consequences that are gonna come upon upon Jesus the devil knows the consequences that are gonna follow him at the end time and he trembles in other words he believes that but believing alone is not enough we ought to do something when we believe something, right? Uh, Jesus says, um, for those that he is going to save, 
you know, there are so many parables that he gave us about people that don't believe, people that believe but do nothing about it, that he's going to say, you workers of iniquity. In other words, if you hear the word of God and not take action about it, you are still not worthy to be in the kingdom of God. You are still an un, the same as an unbeliever because you're not doing what the word of God um, asks you to do. So what is the goal of Bible study? The goal of Bible study is more than just acquiring head knowledge, just memorizing scripture without actually doing what it says. I know at, at Chapel West, uh, Miss Golita there, when she, when she wants to remember the Psalms, she remembers it in songs. She makes songs out of Psalms. It's very beautiful, but that helps her retain those Psalms. And it's also we have so many hymnals that we sing um, from, from the hymnal, the Adventist hymnal, that has got so much scripture and that it helps us when we Sometimes you read, you, you sing a song, and later on you find out, oh, there's a scripture for this. So, and if, if you read the Psalms, you find out that many of the Psalms were actually songs. Songs help us retain scripture sometimes. I know there are people that are very good at memorizing scripture. I'm not very good at memorizing scripture. I can know what the verses are saying and, and know, like, kind of paraphrase them. But I'm not very excellent at, at actually uh, rephrasing them word for word, like restating them word for word. To, to memorize scripture is, is an obedience that is deeper and more meaningful than just outward conformity. It leads us to joyfulness, to joyful to, to do the will of God. So the, the truth of the Bible should not only be memorized, but should be lived. In other words, we should not be like a, a, a light that's, that's hidden under a brush, like Christ said. But how, how can we memorize scripture? How are we able to live the word of God? Can we do that on our own? Many times the Bible tells us we cannot, we need the Holy Spirit, which Christ promised us that he was going to help us. Uh, let's read here uh, Philippians 2, uh, verse 15. The book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 2, verse 15 says, That you may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world so when we memorize scripture when we put scripture to memory we we know that we are living in a world where there is perverseness there is there's the world is crooked the bible says so for us to live and shine like children of God, we ought to memorize scripture. If we don't memorize scripture, we are most likely to join the crooked world and not live like children of the most high God. Um, here it says in John 14 verse 26, and some of these verses have been supplied to us in the quarterly. John 14 verse 26 um, John 14, verse 26, it says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. For us to remember, for, for the Holy Spirit to enable us to remember what God said in the Scriptures, we must read it first. If you don't read it, how can the, the Spirit of God bring it to your remembrance? You must read it first for God to bring it to your remembrance. For you also to, to, 
to search all things you must take action you must actually go into scripture verse upon verse script upon script and and compare scripture to come up with the truth we have to search it and that searching comes from someone who has believed you don't believe and sit back and relax you search the scriptures to find truth so the holy spirit spirit for he, for him to enlighten us we must sit down find time private time to study so you may understand the scriptures um the holy spirit also here it says it leads us to jesus in other words we need the spirit of god for us to go to christ it also leads us to to the truth um it says here that is the spirit will lead us into all truth um, Philippians 2 verse 12 is an invitation to work our own salvation with fear and trouble. And this is one of the verses that uh, people have said, um, let's see, it's kind of a, a, not an easy scripture. Philippians 2 uh, verse 12, it says, yeah, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling now some have asked and said wait how can we is 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 the the, the word of god telling us here that we work our own salvation and and are we saved by works you know that's a good question are we saved by works and and are we doing it on our own no that's not what it's saying here the Bible is saying here that we have to do something, but not on our own. It says here that, actually, if you continue reading, it says, do all things. No, it says here in 13, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So it's kind of being clarified here in, in the next verse that it is God that works in us to uh, both to will, in other words, to even have the desire to do something good comes from the Spirit of God in us. When we open our door, when we, Christ said, Behold, I, 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 I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sit with him and sup with him and he with me. In other words, we have to open the doors to our hearts for the spirit of god to come and dwell in us and start doing the work and start showing this the fruit of the spirit in us which is love kindness joy long suffering forgiveness you know joyfulness all that comes when we have invited the spirit in our hearts and he is the one who gives us the will to do uh, the works of God. Um, I'm going to also go to um, how do we put the, the Bible into practice? Uh, when we read Luke chapter 10, verse 26, the Bible said, he, he, Jesus said to, to him, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? We must follow the example of he who said, learn from me and who is that that's jesus jesus said learn from me and look at the works i do the works of my father um in galatians 15 in galatians 5 verse 22 to 24 here is where the bible tells us the fruit of the spirit galatians 5 verse 22 to 24 it says by the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance against such there is no law against these good the fruits of the spirit there's no law against you that's going to judge you in other words when you practice this being aided by the spirit of god you're not under the law in other words, the law of God cannot judge you because there's nothing to judge there. You are justified by it, actually. 
Um, when Jesus was being tempted, one other advantage of keeping the, the, the word of God in your heart is that you can use it against the, the wiles of the devil. You use the scripture against the temptations of the devil. Um, Jesus did that when he was tempted. Um, he quoted scripture. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he quoted Deuteronomy uh, when he was tempted of the devil. Jesus used scripture when he met um, that woman at the well. Remember when the woman referenced the, the well of, of Jacob and Jesus uh, says there's going to be a time when uh, the worshippers, the true worshippers of God will not worship him by this mountain by, but in spirit. In other words, each time he had an encounter with people, he quoted scripture to teach them. The same applies to us. When we have scripture in our hearts and we are met, we are beset with temptations, we are met with situations when somebody uh, does the finger at you on the streets. What do you do? How do you respond? You, you need to have the scripture in your heart to, to know how to respond to, to an evil word that somebody throws at you. You know to have scripture in your heart when your, your friend that you loved passes away suddenly in an accident when you hear bad news that you don't know how to handle you need scripture to comfort you when you lose a job i know uh, one of our brothers uh, our elders here from Bra brownsburg church how uh, he shared with us uh, when he lost a job that he had kept for so long he he needed scripture at that time to comfort him you know when you wake up every day for 20 years and you go to work and one day you're, you're at home with no scripture you need scripture i mean with no job you need a scripture to help you to be comforted you know when you, when you suddenly have been told of a diagnosis that you didn't expect you've been living healthy all your life and suddenly they did do that mri or uh, uh, cat scan and they tell you you have some a mass or something that you didn't expect you need scripture to comfort you that's why it is very important for us to always have some scripture in our hearts. It comes in handy when we don't have the Bible with us. Um, one other thing that's very interesting with Jesus is that uh, if you read Mark 14 verse 27, um, Mark chapter 14 verse 27, it says here, And Jesus said unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night for it is written i will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be shattered scattered so jesus knew scripture he he knew what was going to happen and he he was saying that some of the scripture that's already written in your books is is going to be fulfilled tonight when he was persecuted and and he's referring here to the sheep as is is uh believe his followers and his disciples so scripture helps you to know events to interpret events when you see events happening in the world you can see you can find go to scripture and say this was written that it will happen the bible says that men shall be lovers of pleasure and lovers of themselves in the end times haters of god and they shall persecute you when you have scripture, all those things come to light and you realize that it was written, it was foretold in the scriptures. So that's another advantage of having scripture in your heart to memorize it, to know what was going to happen, to know what is going to happen, whether it be in our lifetime or in the near future. The Bible also helps us to make decisions what to do in any situation that you did not anticipate um, and also when sharing with christ when people uh, ask you certain verses and to explain them when you have scripture in your heart you know how to answer that um, 
one of the things that also the quarterly uh, talked about was that was asking the question if Christ was in contradiction with what was written in the Bible. Um, let's go here to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5 verse 38 and 39. You have heard that it had been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that you resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law and take away thy court, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Go with him two miles, in other words. So here Jesus seems to be saying, hey, this is what the law was saying. But here, this is what I'm saying. Now, was Jesus contradicting with what, with what had been written in the Bible? No. Jesus, the Bible says he came to do what? To magnify the law. To make it honorable. So in other words, when, when Jesus says, but I say this to you, he was actually magnifying what had been written already in the law. For example, if you remember, he gave the example of saying, if uh, you have heard that it been said that do not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust after her, just looking at a woman to lust after the woman, he said, I say to you that he has already committed adultery in, in their hearts. That's making it even to magnify the law that had only said the act was a sin. He is he's saying just even looking to lust after the woman is a sin and you've already committed adultery. So he was magnifying what the law had said. Where, where they had only thought it was in the act he is saying, even in your mind, when you when you cast it your brother, you've already committed, uh, when you've, you've already murdered your brother, you can murder somebody in your heart. So there are so many sins that if we don't have the Holy Spirit in our hearts, we commit so many sins even resting in our bed. The things that you think about, the sides that you take. I know we have all these things that are happening right now in the country what side do you take and, and what's making you decide to take that side you know it's the things that you just process in your heart but you need the holy spirit to humble yourself and wait and say wait a minute why are things happening like this and where what is my position it needs the word of god for you to to be on the right side of history um Jesus clarified that he had not come to abolish the law or the prophets. Uh, that's in Matthew 5, verse 17. Or reject, neither was he coming to reject part of the Bible, but he came again, like I said, to magnify them, to make it more understandable for us to, to when you magnify something, you're making it more visible to those that, that the naked eye cannot see. But how did Jesus accomplish all this? How did he know the scriptures? The Bible says that Jesus went sometimes early in the morning or sometimes in the night and he would study the scriptures before people woke up to, to ask him for favors, for healing and all that. He would go to the mountain where there was no disturbance to study the scriptures and to be in communion with his father. I know there are some people, probably some of you listening to me, that wake up in the morning to study the scriptures. Some people wake up at 3 a.m. Not easy for me to do. I, I've tried that, but it's not easy. But I think we can all find time to be alone with God and just talk to him. Just ask questions. You know, pour out your heart and ask why things are happening in your life the way they are happening examine yourself could it be that there's sin that you 
are embracing that's in your heart that God is trying to say to wake you up to say hey pay attention to this sin that you have embraced and taking it upon as your own sin are you living like the world does are you dressing like the world scripture helps us to 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 judge each other justly in other ways when you make a judgment about somebody scripture helps you to examine yourself first scripture helps you to to know where where to teach when to teach when to rebuke and how to rebuke somebody do you rebuke somebody when there's a group of people or do you do you take time to do you are you are you patient enough to say to wait and rebuke somebody at the right time or do you just, you know, have no control of your time? And scripture also helps you to help to have control of your time. You watch what you say. Um, scripture helps us also, it teaches us to intercede for others, you know, to pray for others. Even in situations where you don't understand how others are behaving, you say, Lord, help me to understand why people are acting this way. Maybe I'm the one who is wrong. Um, and it also helps you to love your neighbor as yourself, like the scripture has commanded us. So there's all a whole host of advantages when we memorize scripture and keep it to heart. Um, and that's the only way we can be like Jesus. When we say we want to be like Jesus, it takes us to memorize scripture, to read it daily. You know, sometimes it's not about how you feel about scripture, but is the principle behind it to know that the more i read scripture the more closer i am to christ um so jesus did not come to oppose scripture but to to magnify it to make the law more honorable um and also one of the of the verses that uh the quarter gave us uh, this uh week is psalms 46 verse 10 that says be still and know that I am God. I know many times people use this verse to just say, you know, I'm going to be still and God take control. But this verse pretty, is, is really saying that sometimes you need to, 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 to stop from all your, the cares of the world and be still somewhere in a quiet place where you can, you can talk to God one on one. That's being still. Not necessarily that he, he's, you're going to be still and because you've tried things something many times and now I'm just going to be still and let God be God. I mean, you can apply it that way. But here we're told that this scripture really is, is saying be still from your, your, your busy activities and, 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 and let God speak with you. Talk to God and let him also speak with you. Um... um so devote more time with God. That's where we discover the truth that we spoke about today. When we devote more time with God, we discover some scriptures that we didn't think we can understand. This is where we sometimes, I don't know, have you ever read scripture where you thought it was a very difficult scripture? Then you'll be like, oh man, I never understood this way. Now I understand. Now I understand what this scripture is talking about. And as when you understand this more scripture, you begin to, you know, think about other scriptures you have read in the past and you'll be like, oh yeah, that reminds me of Psalms 35 and, and such and such a verse. And, and, and it begins to twine up and to add up and, and you, you, you see the joy, <clears throat> you begin to see the joy of, of reading scripture. You begin to see the joy of not just browsing the the Bible through and, and say that you read the Bible in one year. And yet there's so much. There's so much in it that you just went past. But you're doing you're doing quality study with God. Um, so we have to read it carefully and meditate on it and say what was that verse about? What was it saying? And that's how the Holy Spirit can can talk to you. Um, and sometimes try to memorize it by heart. I know it's been a while since I memorized. I know probably most of you have several verses that you can quote by heart 
And sometimes you realize the more you don't memorize, you don't practice those verses, you begin to, to forget them. You know, you need to continue to, to refresh it in your heart. G um, in Psalms 119 verse 11, uh, the verse says, Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against you. So when you have scripture in your heart, sometimes it helps you not sin against you. We were told this week also about the temptations that Christ went through when he was uh, fasting in the desert. We are told that the devil, when he came, remember, he quoted scripture to Christ. He did not just come and, 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 and say things. He, he quoted scripture because the devil also uh, quote, knows scripture and he knows it more than us, but he can twist it. Twist it. He says here in Luke chapter 4, verse 4. Um, being 40 days, from verse 2, being 40 days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, by but by every word of God. And there he, he quoted scripture. He knew that Jesus could command the stones to be made bread. But Jesus did not do that because he didn't do that. To, he wasn't going to do that to save himself from his fasting. He was in, in praying that God help him go through the cross. And he wasn't going to eat just to, 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 to please somebody. And then Jesus, uh, and then the devil taking him up unto a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. In other words, the devil here is saying, Look, all these things have been given to me. You know, in other words, the world belongs to, to the devil. Because when Adam lost it, Satan is the one who became the custodian. He is the one who became like the owner of this world, uh, even though it ultimately belongs to God. But he is the one who had dominion over this world. So he is saying here that all these things have been given to me because Adam obeyed to me. And to whomsoever I will, I can give it. That's what Satan said to him. Jesus didn't object to that because that was true. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. But Jesus answered and said, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. So here Jesus also responds by scripture. I mean, how else could he have answered this verse when this this what Satan is saying that Everything has been given to me. If you kneel down to, if to worship me, I'll give it to you. I've got authority. But Jesus said, I'm not going to worship you because I have to worship only God. That's only the one I can worship. And if, if, you, if you read further, you see that it was scripture against scripture. Satan's twisting scripture to, to, to convince Christ to sin against God. And God using script and Christ using scripture. To, to defend himself, to say, no, I cannot live by bread alone. That's what the Bible says. And, you, and the other one, he said, uh, he took him to the top of the pinnacle of the church, of the church, and he said, can you jump? When you jump, the angels, the scripture says, the angels of God will catch you before you fall to the ground. And Christ said, no, I cannot tempt God to do that. In other words, you and me know there are some things we cannot do just to tempt God to, to see if God is going to do it. He won't do it for you. I mean, if it, jumping from a high place so God can send angels to, to catch you is something that will happen in the future. When God's people are being persecuted and people are trying to throw them from the mountains, from, from tall buildings to cast them, 
that's when God is going to miraculously send angels to do that. But we, can't, we cannot tempt him now to do that. It's not necessary. In other words, that's, that's actually committing suicide. Because that's what will happen. You can't do that. Um, so memorizing scriptures help us in various circumstances when we are tempted. You know, there are some things in life that you can rationalize because you don't know scripture that well. And you can say, you know, I don't see anything wrong with this thing. I think you've heard people say, oh, I'm not killing a person by doing this. You know, you feel like, you know, it's not bad. It's, it's, a, it's not bad. There's no scripture for it. But I don't think it's really bad. And sometimes we make those decisions and, and make those conclusions because we don't have enough scripture. We don't read enough to know that even the minutest details in our lives, there's scripture that can help us go through. And so we rationalize and we think we are in the right and yet we are wrong. Um, so it helps us make decisions. Um, it, it influences our actions and our thoughts. In other words, the more you don't dwell on scripture, also on dwell on the world, the same way the world is going to influence you in your thoughts and be known to you sometimes. I, I've seen so many things that even has happened when, with all that's happening in this country and how some people have said, you know, I never looked at things that way, but now I've, it looks like I've seen the light. I'm seeing things differently. You know, the judgment that you make when things happen, sometimes it's because you are not informed. You don't have a complete information about things. You, are, you only have a, a smaller portion of, of, of probably people that you hang out with and the things that you hear, but you don't have a broader knowledge of, of, of everyone else involved. Um, and sometimes it takes events like, like what happened recently for you to say, oh, now I see things different. I think, I think this is wrong. I think things has been wrong for a long time. And, and you see what's happening now. Um, scripture also helps us protect, protect us against false ideas and interpretations. In other words, the way we interpret things that I just mentioned, scripture helps you a lot. That's why we, you see sometimes when we are having Bible study, people coming up with, I think this is what is this, I think this, and everybody raising their hand to say, I think, I think, I think. Because could be if the more we study scripture together, the more we understand scripture, the more it can help us not even to argue about the things we disagree on. That's why people always come up with what they think. Um, and also, as we, we uh, just mentioned here, that it helps us um, guard against temptations. There are so many temptations in the world. And um, there are so many different ways to learn the Bible, uh, its teachings and its stories by heart. And like I said, with, through music, uh, through songs, uh, through poetry, like in Psalms, you see there are so many poems in there. Um, and so there are some songs that don't really, you know, help us a lot. There are some songs that, you know, come in repetitions and, and sometimes you don't really take, you don't, you, you can't meditate upon those songs. But there are some songs, you know, that talk about the cross, you know, near the cross, you know, the songs that help you meditate about the goodness of God. Uh, and yet there are some songs that just rep repeat. Um, it, on councils on Sabbath school work, um, chapter two, page 36 here, Ellen White says, there should be a living, growing interest in storing the mind with Bible truth. The precious knowledge thus gained will build a barrier about the soul. In other words, saying that the more we read scripture, there's a barrier, like a wall around your soul that is built. You know, it's, these things happen without you really knowing it, like that's, it's happening. But the more you read the scriptures, the more people end up seeing the humility that you have. People seeing change in you Without you knowing it, that's the, 
the Bible, Christ said, it's like the, the spirit is like the wind. That you can see the change. You can see it blowing the trees, the trees shaking, the grass shaking. But you don't see the wind itself. The same way with scripture, when you read it, when you study it, the way you respond to people changes. The way you see others that may not be as blessed as you changes. You don't think they are lazy. You look at them and you feel compassion for people that uh, could be on, on, on government assistance. You don't say, oh, these are lazy people. Look at all the jobs. That may be true for some, but you, you don't look at it that way. You begin to have compassion and, and pray for them and say, Lord, provide for them. And you say, Lord, what can I do to help these people? You see what I'm saying? That's how you begin to look at, at life. You look at it differently. Because you yourself have been blessed because God has been merciful to you. You know, there are people who, even in our midst, who have been working for so many years. You know, you don't even know you don't even know where your resume is. You don't even know how to make a resume anymore. Why? Because you've had a job for 20 years, for 30 years, whilst other people are, are applying every year after year, they're applying for jobs. The more you read scripture, you look at that and say to yourself, Lord, you have been merciful to me. You look at yourself and you look at others, you don't look down on them. You, you have compassion. You feel sorry, you, you, and you're more grateful to God, and you, are, you, you, are, you spring up to hell. It says, although assailed with temptation. In other words, you and me are assailed with temptation daily. There will be a firm trust in Jesus. You, in other words, you hold on to Christ, despite what's happening around you. Through the knowledge of Him who has called them to glory and to virtue. So you keep on with the knowledge that you have about God. You, you hold on to him. The scripture actually helps you to hold on to Christ and you don't give up. You, you, despite the, the temptation that are assailed about you. Um, I would like to thank you all for listening. I, I know our time, we only have eight minutes here or less. Um, I know you. Most of you want to take a break, and uh, before we we uh, join the pastor, um, I'd like to remind you again that um, this was the last uh, lesson for this quarter, and today, uh, being the thirteenth Sabbath, remember that there is a thirteenth Sabbath offering that we we take to help with missions. Um, I'm not sure exactly what our mission uh, the, the, they're giving for this. I think it's uh, European uh, Union. Uh, I think I'm not sure, but but it's it's a, it's an offering, an extra offering that we need for for the missions abroad. Uh, so remember that. Um, also remember that um, at eleven we are going to join the pastor and we're going to. Um, and start our divine worship. So I'd like to thank you all for uh, watching today. Uh, it was short. We had a glitch at the beginning, but the Lord has been merciful. We are able to connect you with another computer here. So thank you all for participating. And I hope as we live here, we're going to, to, to practice these things that the Bible has taught us, to, to, to work our own um, salvation with fear and trembling. To do the works. In other words, I heard somebody uh, saying that we are not saved by works. But they said, without works, no man shall see God. In other words, God shall look at, at, say, at you and say, you workers of iniquity. In other words, you're, you're, we are doing works no matter whether we do good or bad. There are going to be those that God is going to, Christ is going to say, I was in prison and you visited me. I was hungry and you gave me food. Those are works. So do you see that the judgment of God, we are judged by our works. True, we are not be saved by our works, but without works, no man can see God. Do you see, it's kind of like, you know, it's a fine line. 
you know, you, you have to have works to be saved, pretty much. Without them, you are lost. And works include everything that God has commanded us to do, whether it be returning a faithful tithe, whether it be to observe the Sabbath, to keep it holy, whether it be to give to the poor, whether it be to give offerings, and whether it be to devote time, all those things, God is going to judge us based on those things. And the Bible, there are so many verses here that we can quote that show that we are going to be judged by works. When Remember when in the book of Daniel, when Daniel, Daniel saw the Ancient of Days seated and all the angels in them, and they say the books were opened. What, what, were, what was in those books if our works don't matter? What's written in those books? You and mine's work. Yes, the life we have lived, but we cannot do it on our own. The Bible here we read that it is the Spirit that works in us. We are just allowing the Spirit to, to be used by the Spirit and not resist the, 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 the influence of the Spirit, but we allow ourselves to be used by the Spirit. So thank you so much. I'm just going to uh, close in prayer. Um, and thank you again, Wanani, for t telling us about not that not being on sound. And I welcome, I'd like to thank everybody who, uh, who joined us today. Um, uh, let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning again for allowing us to study your word together. I'd like to thank you, Lord, for the spirit that you promised you shall pour at the end of time and shall help us to do that which is right, to have the, 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 the works of God in us. Help us to open our doors, the doors of our hearts, that you and your son may enter in and, and work the works of God in us that we may be called children of the Most High. Lord, help us to have pure hearts. You said, blessed are the pure in the heart, for they shall see God. We would like to see God one day with our eyes and walk in the streets of God. That's our desire. I pray for each one, Lord, who is under my voice, that we may continue to walk in the light and not in darkness. Despite the temptations that are assailed, may we overcome them with your word. Help each one of us to hide your word in our hearts that we may overcome the wiles of the devil. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayer, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thank you again. I'm just going to log off here, and I thank you, everyone, for joining us in our 13th Sabbath. May God bless you.